Good day, my name is Hugh Reed. I'm the CEO and founder of ReadLawGroup.com. Uh, we prepare people for the bar exam under PassYourBar.com and also help them throughout law school at LawSchoolTutoring.com. You can go to both websites and find out exactly what we do. Now, I've been in the bar review and the test preparation business for approximately 30 years, having worked with the largest bar review company for some 16, 17 years, and then started our own company, uh, which has been very successful tutoring individuals, such as uh, members of Congress, judges. Uh, I got sworn into the Guam Bar the other day by a member of the, uh, or a justice of the Supreme Court of Illinois, and whom I helped pass the bar exam in the early 80s. So I've been doing this for a, a quite a, uh, a bit of time. Uh, the other thing that's a little bit different uh, about what we do than other bar reviews is that we actually take the examination. I take the uh, bar exam every six months somewhere for my multi-jurisdictional law practice, uh, helping uh, U.S. servicemen and women uh, worldwide. And the byproduct is, of course, I get to look at this secure, confidential examination. Uh, I'm legally and ethically bound not to um, uh, release the questions uh, and uh, to candidates. However, I make sure that all of our candidates are tested appropriately on what has been tested on recent exams and we follow the National Conference of Bar Examiners outline very, very closely. So, how do you score well in criminal law? Find out what's being tested first. If you're still in law school, go find out. Uh, go look at the old exams that uh, have been released uh, by your law professor. Uh, talk to others who have taken his or her class because we know that criminal law from Professor X could be vastly different than criminal law from Professor Y. On the multi-state bar exam, however, um, uh, we follow a certain outline published by the National Conference of Bar Examiners. And the, uh, the bar examiners tell us that criminal law is going to be tested in five major categories. That is, category one, homicide. Category two, uh, other crimes, such as theft crimes, robbery, larceny, and the like. Category three, uh, inchoate crimes. Inchoate crimes means preliminary crimes. Preliminary crimes, uh, conspiracy, solicitation, attempt, and accomplice liability. That's what's tested in category three. Category four, general principles. General principles, intent. What is his or her state of mind? What is the criminal state of mind? And category five, criminal procedure or constitutional protection of the accused. Now what we do uh, also is we provide certain mnemonics and memory devices. If those help you, they help me a lot as a former head of pilot training for the United States Army. Uh, we used to teach our pilots using checklists, memory devices for their emergency procedures. Much like uh, pilots, you're going to be under anxiety conditions taking examinations. And the three things the examiner wants to see from you is number one, your law, law knowledge, and these mnemonics and memory devices really help in that regard. Number two, your law expression, how you express yourself. And number three, your law analysis. So those are the three major things that are tested on every examination, whether it's multiple choice or whether it's an essay examination. So the outline of what's being tested is key. If you're still in law school, we can send you a criminal law or a criminal procedure outline, whatever course you're taking, and then you annotate your outline in that document, and then you talk to your attorney coach about reviewing specific things that are important are bound to be tested. If you're not in law school getting ready for the bar exam, I would suggest you get an early start, a head start. So let's talk, uh, and by the way, we start as early as five months before the exam, and we constantly make you prove up uh, do your work and we guarantee your results. We have the highest pass rate of any bar review in the country and that is because we actually focus on your execution, on your constant execution of things that you're going to be tested on. Whereas other bar reviews, uh, a lot of them have never taken a multi-state bar exam. Um, you know, the CEO and president of the largest traditional bar review, for example, uh, or the, the uh, multi-state lecturers, many of them have never taken a multi-state bar exam. Or, in some other bar reviews, they may have taken the exam, but it's been years ago, and uh, so they don't have the current expertise on the examination. And a lot of students are finding out that they're wasting their time. You can go to lawschool.com, lawschool.com, and you can find some of the blogs that have been written about these uh, lecturers, because a lot of them aren't very good. They know their subjects, because they teach them every day in law school. However, they have no idea 
how it's tested on recent exams. So let me give you some mnemonics and memory devices, which hopefully will give you an idea of what we do that's a little bit different. General intent crimes, first of all. You know, we have several types of intent uh, that are tested on the examination, and uh, uh, the law, or the common law, always looked at intent first, and they said, what kind of intent did this person have? Was it a general intent, or was it a specific intent? For general intent crimes, you can remember all the general intent crimes with rabbit, R-A-B-I-T, R-A-B-I-D. That is rape, arson, battery, involuntary manslaughter, and depraved heart murder, second degree murder. So rabbit, those are the general intent crimes. Now why do we differentiate general intent crimes from specific intent crimes? It's because specific intent crimes, we have some defenses that are not available to general intent crimes. The two, one, the two that are tested uh, often are voluntary intoxication and secondly, um, mistake of fact. Any mistake, whether reasonable or not, could be a defense for a specific intent crime. So start with the rabbit crimes. We also have the model penal code uh, a, an effort to try to standardize criminal law around the United States, not tested very often, but generally if you remember the model penal code, anything that ends in LY, purposely, knowingly, uh, recklessly, uh, plus strict liability, could be a model penal code kind of uh, state of mind. Um, under, uh, in crimes and in torts in American law, uh, we have no duty to come to the aid of someone else. So they'll give you a big, long, fat pattern. Someone is being held up. We have no duty unless it meets the elements of scrap, S-C-R-A-P. That is, S, there's a statute that dictates you have to act. C, you're under contract. You're a lifeguard. You have to aid someone gurgling in the bottom of the pool. But if you're not the lifeguard, you have no duty. You could be an Olympic swimmer, see someone gurgling in the bottom of the pool. That's OK. R, there's a relationship, a close familial relationship, or some other kind of relationship, such as a passenger on a, a bus, or a, a guest, a, in an, a, a innkeeper to a guest. There's a special relationship. Or uh, you're an invitee, you're an invitee. Otherwise, there is no duty to act. A stands for assume, Assumption. Once you assume to act, you have to carry and follow through. P stands for peril. Peril. Once you place someone in peril, then you have a duty to act. Otherwise, there is no duty to act in American law. A couple of other mnemonics, perhaps, uh, for criminal procedure. I personally like the warrant uh, mnemonics. Under American law, we, on the Fourth Amendment, we need a warrant, right? And uh, the the elements of a proper warrant are PIMPS, P-I-M-P-S, that is probable cause, impartial magistrate, I-M, particularity, it has to be stated with particularity, and finally, uh, standing, in order to have standing, it's got to be state action. So PIMPS. There are exceptions to the warrant requirements. You may remember them with box pies, box pies, B-A-C-H, apostrophe S pies. The uh, B stands for border searches. A, automobile searches. C, consent. H, hot pursuit. S, school searches. P, plain view, plain view. I, incident to arrest. E, emergency searches. And finally, stop and frisk. Well, this is just a flavor of how we can help you Please go to readlawgroup.com, get your free study aid, or call us at 800-852-3926. Thank you.